Alright, so the septal wall MI, or what a lot of people call the Widowmaker, is an occlusion of the left anterior descending artery. Now I have to tell you, I hate the term Widowmaker, and I hate it that people learn this terminology, because when it becomes secondary to refer to this as a Widowmaker, it's only a matter of time before somebody says something like this in front of the family when the EKG rolls out, so keep that in mind. Um, it is especially a quote-unquote Widowmaker when the entirety of the left main artery is occluded, and I'll show you what I mean. Now, as you can see from this photo, the left anterior descending artery actually traces the septal wall. But going over to the next slide, you can see these arrows denote that the, the blue arrow denotes rather that the upper portion of the left coronary artery actually supplies both the left anterior descending and the left circumflex. So a blockage up here is particularly bad or particularly a widow maker if you choose to use that terminology. So a couple of facts about the left anterior descending. It is often the largest coronary artery and usually supplies greater than 50% of the heart in regular people. Um, as a side note, one thing to remember is that in 8 out of 10 people, the left anterior descending wraps around the bottom of the heart and continues to supply blood beyond that. So you are, you're talking about a very vast amount of blood supply uh, being choked off when this is occluded. So what are some things you can look for on the ECG when you see one of these manifesting? Well, obviously the first one's going to be ST elevation. Remember, we are talking about a transmural MI. The second will be conduction problems, particularly those who function on the AV node and the bundle branches. So AV blocks, uh, especially ones that, that manifest and change in front of you, are quite common. You can also see the QRS actually widen out and become a wide complex rhythm and become a left bundle branch or a bifascicular block right in front of you as the blood supply to those bundle branches and things are being choked off. So let's do a quick review of which parts of the ECG actually correspond to which coronary artery. So if you look in front of you, you can see that the left anterior descending is represented by V1 through V4. And also take note that uh, often enough when you see elevation in 1 and ABL, this is what we call a high lateral. This is indicative of a left circumflex occlusion, but it also could indicate a left main arterial inclusion. So if we look at this ECG, we can see uh, elevation in V2, V3, V4, and V5. This is indicative of uh, an aeroceptal STEMI with some uh, lateral wall involvement here. So here is where we would expect to see some of those conduction changes and think of things of those nature. Uh, also take account of the ST segment change in V1 that looks like it's about to happen. So there's some elevation that's either going on here or getting ready to go. And then on top of that, look at the ischemia that you can see in one uh, AVL and in V6. So there's a lot of ischemia going on here. This is going to put the heart under a great amount of strain. What should you expect? Overall, you should expect uh, an unstable patient. So expect the unexpected to be prepared for everything. Uh, do remember that the left anterior descending artery is not going to show signs and symptoms usually until the occlusion is 70% or greater. So your vasodilators and things like that, your, your nitroglycerin and, and what other things your local protocols allow um, are very important to trying to sneak a little bit of blood past this occlusion if that is at all possible. When you see patients like this, make sure you have the defib pads on them because when things go south on these, it can happen very quickly. Make sure you have your IV line started and run serial ECGs. If you're not running an ECG every five minutes on a STEMI, you're doing it wrong. You need to be running it every couple of minutes. Blood clots grow very quickly. Overall, stay on your toes and be ready and alert the cath lab. And you should be able to handle these patients um, with as good of an outcome as they can possibly have as long as you're prepared.